I'm going to show you how to make the large applique flamingo from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping, a selection of threads with matching bobbins because I'm going to make it reversible, some masking tape, my squizzers, some pins with heads on them and my fabrics and batting cut to size. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and also some discount codes for you as well. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash waste stabiliser. So place it over the outer hoop and then insert the inside hoop. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop so that it stops our um, stabiliser being pulled down between the two hoop pieces. So take a pin, rest it on the inside hoop, push it through, bring it back round and through the stabiliser once again. And that's going to anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides. Load file number one into your machine along with your matching bobbin and thread for the legs and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. I've slipped a piece of paper underneath my hoop in the hope that you can see my outline. If not, you will see it in a minute. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge and from the inside here. If you're not adding um, a backing fabric you can skip this step but I am so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place place your front fabric over the top and tape that in place as well making sure that you've got a matching bobbin and thread for the border of the legs loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number three and that's going to secure the fabric in place. Remove your tape from the front and back of your hoop and we're now going to trim up all our excess fabrics. So starting on the back, turn your hoop over and trim around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. You're now going to stitch round number four and that's going to do the satin stitch border all around the legs and in the middle here. So make sure that you've got a matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine for that. Now 
Now that the legs are stitched we can remove this from the hoop and we're going to trim carefully away around the stitch line from the back. We're now going to trim up along the, the edge where there is no set in stitching because that's going to be where our join is on the third hooping. And that's our first hooping complete. We can now put this aside. We're now going to do the second hooping. So as before, you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer in the hoop, load file B into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting down over the top and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line. Because this is going to be reversible, whatever we're going to do on the front of the hoop, we're also going to do on the back. So turn your hoop over place your backing fabric over the outline and take it in place. Place your front fabric over the outline as well and take that in place too. Making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread for your fabric loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabrics to the hoop. If you're using a light fabric over the top of a darker one and you think it's going to show through, you can trim out this area here and the same on the back. I'm going to show you how to do it anyway even though it won't make much difference to my fabrics. So take your scissors and just nick the fabric. Don't cut the stabilizer it st itself and then trim it out. And then you're going to place your backing fabric for the beak or the upper part of the beak should I say over the outline and tape it in place and now we're going to do the same on the front try not to trim away your batting for this as you cut your fabric And once more, place your fabric over the area that you've trimmed out and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to secure both pieces to the hoop. We're now going to trim up along this stitch line here for the minute both back and front and place our fabric for the bottom part of the beak over that area 
and tape it in place. Now we're going to do the same on the front. Place your fabric over it and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. You're now going to trim up all your fabrics, both front and back of the hoop. Making sure that you've got a matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine for the head and the neck. You're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the zigzagging around the raw edges and then it's going to satin stitch the pink fabric around the head and neck. Load your matching bobbin and thread for the satin stitch around the top half of the beak into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number seven. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the white of the eye into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number eight. Load your black bobbin and thread into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number nine and that's going to give you the black detail in the eye. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the bottom of the beak into your machine. I'm staying with black. And then you're going to stitch round number 10. Now that the stitching on the head is finished, we're going to free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over. We're just going to trim up the join line here. We want to cut close to the stitch line so that it's all nice and neat for joining it to the body. And that's the head complete. You can now set this aside for a minute. We're now going to do the third hooping which is file C. So load that file into your machine along with the matching bobbin and thread for the satin stitch border of the body. You're also going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as you have done throughout. Then pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your batting placement outline. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line.
We're now going to attach our fabric. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Place your front fabric over the outline and tape that in place too. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Trim up the excess fabric from both front and back of the hoop, so turn your hoop over. making sure that you got your matching bobbin and thread for the satin stitch border of the body loaded into your machine you're now going to stitch round number four and that's going to zigzag around here and it will stop when we come to join the neck to the body You're now going to add the head. I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Where exactly where the zigzagging stops, you want to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here. And secure it in place. Now I'm going to use a pin but right out of the way of the stitch line. And I'm going to put a little bit of tape just to hold these corners down. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag over the top here and join the two pieces together. Check your join and if you're happy with it, you're then going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag along here and it's going to stop where we come to join the legs. So the legs are now going to go on here. Make sure that you get them facing the right direction and you're going to put this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where there's no zigzagging. I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pin it in place. Once again, keeping my pins right out of the way of the stitch line. And the stitch line is going to be on top here. I'm just going to pop another little pin in. and a little bit of tape to hold the edges down. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag over the top of the legs here to join the legs to the body. So check your join and make sure that you're happy with it. If you are making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread for the satin stitch border loaded into your machine you're then going to stitch round number eight and that's going to do the final round of stitching. So with all the stitching complete we can now turn this over and free it from the hoop. I've already removed all the tape. All that remains for us to do now is to dissolve 
the excess stabilizer from around the edge so we're going to do that with some warm water and a cotton bud so just take your cotton bud dip it in the warm water and wipe it around the edge And that's our gorgeous flamingo finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well.